Good morning, folks. We've got eye candy, cosmic revelations, a second super changing landscape on millennial scales, and some solar forcing. We've got our store and textbook PDF ready to go today, but let's get started at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our star was mostly quiet. Detailed observations of coronagraphs will reveal small stealth CMEs off the limbs, but they are not headed at Earth, and it's the southern coronal hole stealing the show at the moment as it develops on the disk. It is noteworthy. The uptick during our last coronal hole earthquake watch ended as the coronal hole departed, and we're way below average seismicity for days since then, shaking to return at higher levels this weekend. Moving on to the solar wind, top left, the yellow and purple curves both go up from their anemic density and speed profiles the last few days. Going from nearly dead to crawling in the solar wind has indeed brought enough for the green bars on the bottom, KP1s, to come and end the cosmic ray health alert from yesterday. Recall that in reality, it actually persists for 24 hours after the first KP1, so that'll be tonight. Moving on to aesthetics. Bepi Colombo just swung by Venus on one of its close passages. Groundbreaking mission, getting closer and closer. Up next, we've got the simulations based on what they think the James Webb Telescope will see within the Cosmic Web. Gorgeous simulation, but a simulation only. And for the James Webb to see reality, they'll actually need to launch it first. It's years behind and billions over budget. We go to those real observations next to find astronomers needing to once again rethink the heavens. The metallicity floor has just been jacked downward, and given that they figured the heavens were so big they'd never actually see much of the lowest floor, they must now not only revise their marks, but ask themselves how much lower it could go, because none of them believe they got lucky enough to actually catch the lowest of the floors. And speaking of back to the drawing board, star clusters are not as clustered as we thought, at least not when you take in the totality of their expanse. Just like with the vastly wider galactic halos of plasma they couldn't see before and which toss their models for a loop, so does this at the subgalactic level. When astronomers need to think bigger, they should be thinking connectivity. Moving back to Earth, and if you haven't heard about the cyclic greening of the Sahara, it's an amazing thing. This is pretty much in the same vein. Hong Kong, a tropical paradise, changing that much over millennial scales, apparently yes. And about the only key element of this discovery, not flushed out in the work, is that this is the second major signal that the mid-Holocene had much wider tropical regions than today, and the world was hotter just a few thousand years ago. Up next, we find a long-term control over those same timelines by major processes like NAO. We have seen nearly every major climate point underpinned by ENSO, NAO, PDO, the annular modes, and yet when we see every last one of the long-term control functions proven to be controlled by the sun, for some reason it's harder to get credit for that in the mainstream. And when papers on the shorter term detail how much space weather is affecting pressure cells, cloud cover, and atmospheric electricity on the minute scale, there's an academic disconnect with what you hear on the news. But it is being bridged, slowly. New work here, actually a full chapter in the new Springer textbook, describing Earth as a capacitor, just like we do. And this explains why there are so many papers on how the sun controls short-term weather, long-term climate, and earthquakes. Where those sciences meet will be when space plasma meets atmospheric fluid dynamics and no, they are not exactly puzzle pieces cut to fit together. And yet, somehow they do anyway. Folks, the best 500 papers on why it's the sun that controls the weather, climate, earthquakes, technology, and human health, along with the next end of the world, is all in our textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, 3rd edition. The PDF is also available from now until October 21st, and students who I caught snagging it already this morning, I have given all of your professors a different final exam than the one in the back of the book. Sorry, guys. Get the book and all the rest of our books and gear at otf.cells.com. Again, PDF available only a few days for those who have too high a shipping cost for the hardcover textbook. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.